Up until a couple of weeks ago, we thought it would be the start of Donald Trump's first criminal trial, the first ever for a former president. Now, that trial itself has been postponed, but tomorrow is still set to be an active day for Donald Trump and his lawyers as we await developments in not one but two of his legal cases. In about 24 hours, Trump faces an important and costly deadline in his civil fraud case in New York. Unless the appellate court steps in, he's got to put up a bond for the roughly half a billion dollar penalty that he owes as a result of the judgment handed down last month against him and his business. Early last week, the former president's lawyers told the court that obtaining such a bond for a massive sum like that was, quote, a practical impossibility. 30 insurance companies were unable or unwilling to help Donald Trump secure the bond that he needed, especially since the bulk of his assets are in real estate, and many don't accept that as collateral. But just two days ago, Trump posted on Truth Social, his own social media platform, that he has nearly $500 million in cash, a claim we can only take at face value right now. If Trump is indeed unable to submit a bond and no other last-minute deal is struck, New York State Attorney General Letitia James has previously said that she's prepared to seize the former president's assets. The question is now, how soon will she start that process and what will it look like? Meanwhile, Trump's traveling from Florida to New York tonight. He's expected to attend court tomorrow for a hearing related to the criminal case brought against him by the Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg. Nearly a full years ago, a year ago, Bragg indicted Trump for allegedly covering off a payoff to avoid a potential sex scandal just days before the 2016 election. It was the one criminal case against Trump that appeared on track to head to trial as scheduled. But it was delayed earlier this month because of a tranche of more than 100,000 pages of potentially relevant documents that had only recently been turned over from the Department of Justice to the Manhattan DA's office. The presiding judge, Juan Mershon, has called the hearing to get some clarity about how and why that potential evidence wasn't turned over sooner. sooner. It was asked for a year ago. Tomorrow's hearing is going to help determine if the trial can proceed in mid-April or if it warrants further delay. Trump's lawyers have taken advantage of this moment as an opportunity to request that the trial be pushed back by up to 90 days or that the judge dismiss the charges entirely. Both of these New York cases carry great personal, professional and political risk for the presumptive GOP nominee for very different reasons. They represent two of Trump's worst fears, a criminal prosecution and the perception that he's not as wealthy or successful as he's claimed to be for decades. While the former president and his legal team have had some success in slowing down progress in his other criminal cases, it seems likely that his criminal trial in New York will take place before the summer, which raises the possibility that Trump could be a convicted felon by the time voters head to the polls on Election Day. Meanwhile, tomorrow's expensive deadline for his bond has exposed the depth of his financial troubles. As the Washington Post points out, Trump can file for bankruptcy, which his companies have done six times in the past, to ease the financial burdens that he's facing. But those close to him say that he's, quote, not considering that approach, partially out of concern that it could damage his campaign to recapture the White House from President Biden in November, end quote. Recent polling trends continue to show that the race remains highly competitive, but Biden is pulling far ahead in one other important metric. According to reports recently filed with the Federal Election Commission, President Biden reported $71 million cash in hand. That's more than double the $33.5 million reported by Trump's campaign. All right, joining me now to wrap this all up is the former United States Attorney Joyce Vance. She's an MSNBC contributor and columnist and the co-host of the Sisters-in-Law podcast. Also with us is Molly Jung Fast. She's a special correspondent for Vanity Fair, host of the Fast Politics podcast, and an MSNBC political analyst. And I don't know if it's just me or the voices in my ear, but it sounds like a hairdryer's on. Anybody else hearing that? Okay, just to be clear, a hairdryer is joining us for this segment as well. Uh, not mine, by the way, just for the record. I don't own a hairdryer. Joyce Vance, nice to see you. Uh, we talked a little bit about this document situation in New York. These uh, 100,000 or so documents that, the, that, that Alvin Bragg requested from the federal government, the Department of Justice, about a year ago. They've just been turned over. Trump's folks have said, we haven't got them and we haven't had a chance to look through them. What's the story about? 
So this looked like it might be something at the outset. In fact, even the Manhattan DA was willing to take a 30-day pause to try to figure out what the situation involved. But it's important to remember that it's not the U.S. Attorney, US Attorney's Office in Manhattan that's prosecuting Trump. It's the Manhattan DA. And so the question the judge will take up tomorrow morning is whether or not the Manhattan DA failed to turn over discovery to Trump. And as it turns out, in this huge tranche of documents, only about 270 of them had any bearing on this case. At the end of the day, it was an issue where the Manhattan DA's office didn't get documents from the U.S. attorney because the U.S. attorney didn't have them in hand. They were somewhere lost between the special counsel's office, the FBI, and Maine Justice in Washington. All of that to say very little of relevance in this case and nothing to lay on the doorstep of the Manhattan DA. So one expects that after the judge hears the full story tomorrow morning in court, this case will be back on track for trial. Uh, Molly, I want to read you a quote from a person close to Trump uh, with whom The Washington Post spoke uh, in that, that article I was referring to. It said, Trump would rather have Letitia James show up with the sheriff at 40 Wall Street, make, make a huge stink about it, than say he's bankrupt. He thinks about what is going to play politically well for him. Bankruptcy doesn't play well for him, but having her try to take his properties might, end quote. What's your sense of what Trump's game is here with respect to the money he's got to come up with by tomorrow? You know... Again, I don't know. He Trump believes that defendant Trump helps candidate Trump. Mm -hmm. He has believed this since the yes. start. And remember, I, I would like to quote Will Hurd here, other Republican, uh, you know, candidate, when he said Trump is running for president to not go to jail. Right. So remember, this is the whole, you know, origin story of this campaign. Is that so? I think he thinks that being a defendant helps him, and it helps him with the base. I am not convinced that swing voters right. think that, you know, here's a guy, bond companies will not give him a bond. Right. They do not trust him. But you should make him president of the United States. I'm not sure that's a winning message. Yeah, I, I, your point that you make there is interesting. It, it, all of this seems to help him with the base. But that, I think, can apply to everybody, right? right. You're, you're, you're always tighter to your, your, your close supporters. It, it, there is not a role that expands what he's talking about. But this bankruptcy thing does worry him, which is interesting. Right. Because he's, had, he's experienced bankruptcy more than most Americans ever will. No, I think he's legitimately afraid of going to jail and legitimately afraid of being bankrupt. But what's happening here is he has never been interested in expanding the electorate ever. Right. Even from the moment he got elected. So his people delight in the cruelty, delight in the racism, delight in it. But he can't grow that number and he needs to grow the base in order right. to get reelected. Or he needs to be close enough so that he can say that it was uh, that the fix was in. Joyce, let's talk about.